Welcome to the Gravity Sketch Automotive Interior Design Training Curriculum. In this session, we'll learn the basics of building a surface model in Sub-D. The quickest way to get into Sub-D is to use the Stroke tool in the ribbon setting with Sub-D turned on. Point mode enables greater precision when laying out the initial surfaces. You can also use primitive objects to initiate Sub-D surfaces. Sub-D surfaces are comprised of three main components, points or vertices, edges, and faces. Going into edit mode, you can switch between a smooth, curved view and a polygonal view to better understand the structure of your surfaces. I often go back and forth between the smooth and polygonal views as I'm working. This works in much the same way as other Sub-D modeling programs like Blender, Maya, or Alias Sub-D. You can grab and move points, edges, and faces individually, or grab and move an entire row of edges or faces by holding the opposite trigger. You can grab an edge or face and pull the trigger on your drawing hand to extrude additional surfaces. Bringing one point near another will cause them to snap and weld together. Points and edges along the center line can be snapped and welded at the mirror plane. Bringing points and edges closer together will cause tighter curves and bends, while spreading points further apart will lead to smoother curves and sections. Click anywhere on the surface to add additional edges and control points to tighten up a curve or section, or to add a character line, or grab and delete points to make your surfaces smoother. Using the ribbon stroke tool, you can lay out the main sections and character lines according to your wireframe drawing using the drawing as a guide. By extruding and pulling additional surfaces, you can quickly capture the main interior elements. When laying out your surface structure, it is best to keep your polygons four-sided, avoiding unnecessary twists and turns. Sometimes it's necessary to use three and five-sided polygons to achieve certain transitions. A little bit of trial and error may be necessary to resolve certain areas. At this point, I have a fairly comprehensive interior model of the main theme, and in the next session, I'll show you how to get into the details and create a much more refined interior model suitable for milling, 3D printing, and photorealistic visualization.